only you know what you want. Indeed, only astronauts know what other astronauts need and SpaceX has thoroughly applied this rule to develop its Dragon. Thanks to that, the United States ultimately has a perfect alternative for NASA's retired space shuttle. Moreover, Dragon also shows its outstanding advantages compared to its predecessors that enable it to shock any NASA's astronauts. It's mind-blowing what inside the SpaceX Dragon shocked NASA's astronauts. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Firstly, what makes the difference between SpaceX's Dragon capsule and any traditional spacecraft? Does it depend on who made it? Yes. However, most important are always the R&D principles that manufacturers pursue. This is confirmed by astronaut Garrett Reisman, who helped develop SpaceX's crew Dragon capsule and also has experience working with NASA. A NASA veteran who flew on all three space shuttles across two trips to the ISS Garrett Reisman was selected by NASA as a mission specialist astronaut in 1998. After leaving NASA in early 2011, he joined SpaceX, where he served in multiple capacities most recently as the director of space operations. Most notably, he helped the company to develop the human carrying crew Dragon. Garrett Reisman is someone with experience in two radically different space organizations that are cultures apart when it comes to getting things done. Here are his personal thoughts on what kept SpaceX and its Dragon capsule moving forward in the marathon with the legacy agencies. SpaceX likes to move fast and adjust on the go while NASA is far more cautious in its decision making. This cultural gap is perhaps best exemplified by Reisman's experience of trying to get a change to the space shuttle. NASA had a shuttle cockpit avionics upgrade program to tweak the vehicle's information displays, but even then the team was extremely limited. Reisman's job was to develop a new way of doing procedures in case of, say, engine failure. These procedures used a physical paper guide, so astronauts had to flick to the correct page, identify the fault, and follow the instructions. He suggested the improved method by using a table computer hooked up to the vehicle's telemetry string. That way, instead of identifying the fault and flicking to the correct page, the tablet could locate the relevant issue and display the proper instructions. That immediately got shot down, he says. There was no budget to do all the testing. We can't possibly do anything that complicated. He also noticed one significant matter in NASA's procedure. The procedure guides were usually printed in black and white. They said, what if people are colorblind? Reisman says, I'm like, well, you test all of us to make sure we're not colorblind as part of the selection criteria. Could NASA print the manual in color to improve usability? He admitted that the space agency might have to buy color printers, but as he said, they're like, well, still, we can't do it. During many years serving in the National Agency, ultimately, Reisman managed to get one change of any substance into the procedure system. So I said, instead of using a dash cut, we use an arrow, he says. And they said, okay, that's the one thing I changed. Reisman once told the story to Chuck Yeager, the first pilot to fly faster than the speed of sound, Jaeger lamented the fact that the astronauts weren't involved enough in the design and operation of hardware. I told him this whole story and he just looked at me and he said, you sorry bastard, he says. It was frustrations like that that helped precipitate the decision to go to SpaceX. Reisman shared, at SpaceX, we would make a decision in a single meeting that would take years to reach the same decision point at NASA. An environment that encourages innovation like SpaceX has enabled Garrett Reisman to demonstrate his talent in developing American spacecraft for American astronauts. Thanks to that, we now have a means to reach the pinnacle of perfection. In the traditional conception of spaceflight, aesthetics tend to be underrated. This is reflected apparently through the outlook of NASA's pumpkin IV a suit or space shuttle. Nevertheless, Elon Musk broke the rule. Since the Dragon V-2 space capsule was unveiled on May 29, 2014, it shocked the world with its sleek design and has a retool heat shield that will withstand multiple re-entries, unlike disposable contemporary vehicles. The spacecraft also has retractable legs that allow it to land and take off vertically. You've probably seen photos of astronauts cram cheek to jowl inside Russia's three-person Soyuz spacecraft. It's much too small and tight complains Dutch-European Space Agency astronaut Andre Kupers of Russia's spacecraft. I'm pretty sure no cosmonaut has claustrophobia, 
the irrational fear of confined spaces. If they have, it's where the Crew Dragon comes in. Crew Dragon can accommodate seven passengers, though a maximum of four will fly on the contracted NASA missions. Four seats, each of which featured plenty of legroom and the ceiling was nice and high. The risk of head bumps seemed pretty low. Dragon's two main components, including the capsule and trunk, stand around 8.1 meters tall, with a diameter of 4 meters, a little bigger than Soyuz. The Japanese 58-year-old astronaut, Suichi Noguchi, who became the first person to fly on SpaceX's Crew Dragon for NASA's inaugural Crew-1 mission shared about Dragon, the Dragon is the best. I feel Dragon is really ready to go up. It's really fun to ride, and two days in Dragon is really remarkable memories. What's more, as SpaceX engineer John Federspiel said, the company had wanted to make Crew Dragon feel like a 21C century spaceship. He explains, probably one of the biggest features of Dragon are the touchscreens on the inside. We designed them not just to be very functional, but with a user experience in mind. Crew Dragon is an autonomous vehicle, and the first backup will be mission controllers here on Earth. So, the craft's commanders and pilots won't do much active flying during missions to and from the ISS if all goes according to plan. But when astronauts do take the wheel, the experience will be more akin to operating an iPad than flying a space shuttle or fighter jet. Crew Dragon's controls and flight information are arrayed on three large touchscreens facing the commander and pilot, as you can see in these photos of the vehicle's cockpit simulator. And yes, the touchscreens are compatible with the gloves on the SpaceX suit. As Doe Hurley, the commander of the first crewed SpaceX mission, which launched in May 2020, said, and if the automation doesn't take care of a problem, then the ground is your next layer of defense. He referred to SpaceX ground controllers who can problem solve and issue commands to. The spacecraft from the comfort of mission control. Only if the Dragon fails to look after itself and the ground staffers can't solve the problem would the astronauts take over. This upgrade helps astronauts escape the fear of the sheet metal instrument panels with hundreds of switches, dials, lights, and analog gauges on NASA's old Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsules. Their simple onboard computers were controlled by a mechanical keyboard. The commander flew those ships the same way you'd fly a plane with a control stick determining velocity, attitude, altitude, and direction. Can't help but say Crew Dragon's escape system, which is designed to get astronauts to safety in the event of an emergency during launch or any other phase of the trip to orbit. That escape system is powered by eight Super Draco engines which are built into the wall of the capsule. It's wonderful that four years have passed and SpaceX Dragon still hasn't forced the activation of that escape system, showing the high level of reliability of this human-carrying vehicle. It's what Boeing Starliner spacecraft has not yet demonstrated for a decade. Not only is it safe, but the comfort of the Dragon is also loved by astronauts. NASA astronaut Victor Glover, who joined Crew-1 mission, shared a few words about his experience on Crew Dragon. It was awesome. Dragon performed superbly, Glover added, once the second stage cut off and you're floating. I've been able to feel that for a few seconds, but to have that for an extended period was just truly amazing. The thing that really stood out to both of us, and we mentioned it as soon as we docked, is we didn't feel the docking, Doe Hurley said. It was just so smooth. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time